Okay, hello everybody. Um, I've been doing a uh, zombie apocalypse playthrough, but it was not only suggested to me, but also from me looking at the statistics on the on the channel that everybody seems really interested in me when I went over sort of in pretty good detail um, how I modded my game on the PS4. So, in response to that, I figured I'd make like a little tutorial here. Um, the other reason that I wanted to do it now is because I was noticing some frame rate drops on my playthrough with all of the like interiors that I added and things like that. So I upgraded to a PS4 Pro and now I've had to, to copy the game over to the PS4 Pro and now I'm going to have to download all my Creation Club content and um, my mods all over again. So I figured I might as well kind of film it and go over what I was doing. Um, so a few things with the PlayStation. Um, before you start this process on the PlayStation, the PlayStation has, is famous for what's called the zero kilobyte save error. And what exactly that is, is an error that you get usually after modding your game and adding certain Creation Club items, mainly a, like too many skins. If you download a whole bunch of Creation Club skins, it can trigger this error. And that really sucks because the only way to get rid of Creation Club items is to completely uninstall and reinstall your game and then go back into Creation Club and only download the things that you want. I know because I've had to do it several times. But combating that save error while modding is sometimes kind of tricky and hairy. Um, I will leave links into the in the description to both um, the the page that I use. It's actually a Google document um, that really goes over in depth what you should do when you're modding, and it's got a lot of stuff on there about modding on consoles. I'm on a PS4, which is not only the most limited of being able to mod on, but it you also have to be really careful with it because you can run into this zero kilobyte save error. And I will also link to a Bethesda thread dedicated to combating that error on the PS4. Now it is a PS4 exclusive error. So you can still watch this video if you're not modding on a PS4, if you're on an Xbox and you're new to modding. I'm no expert, I don't write mods, none of that stuff, but I have been modding both this and Skyrim for years. Um, in different ways and making it work on the PS4 um, with minimal to no errors or crashes. Crashes, a couple crashes are pretty inherent with modding, especially Fallout. But anyway, don't panic if you get a crash. Um, but I figured I'd walk people through it now. So anyway, I have a fresh install of Fallout here, and I'm. Um, during the process of installing all these mods and trying to avoid that zero kilobyte saver, um, you have to be you, ha you have to do some physical things with the PlayStation. Like before you start, after you install your game, you get all of your um, add-ons put onto it, and everything's installed and it's ready to go. You have to shut off your PlayStation and unplug it for probably about. I don't know, a couple minutes. And what that does is it clears the, the cache in the system because PlayStation, part of the problem is that PlayStation has a problem processing its, its RAM. And that, that's part of the reason that this error happens only on PlayStation. It's just a, a manufacturer defect it, inherent in the system. So, but by unplugging it, after you've shut it off and the light has shut off, you gotta do it appropriately. By unplugging it, you clear that cache. And then, after you've waited a couple minutes, you can plug it back in and start it back up, but you should start it in safe mode. And the way you do that is when you start it, you press and hold the power button until it beeps the second time. And that'll bring you into safe mode. And I can't show it on this video because PlayStation just doesn't record like that. But then it'll go into a menu and you actually have to plug the controller into the console using your charging cable and select rebuild your database. And it says it could take several hours, but it never, at least in my experience, it never takes several hours. I, I suppose it's, it's possible and that's why they put it in there. But it usually only takes maybe, maybe a minute. 
to rebuild your database. So you do that, and then when that's done, it brings you back to the login screen and you should shut it off again and unplug it again and wait another minute. And then, then you can plug it back in um, or two minutes, two to five minutes, whatever. If you smoke, go have a cigarette. If you go make a sandwich, go to the bathroom, have a shower, whatever you want to do while it's unplugged, just give it some time and it will use up the residual power in the system and you'll be fine. So once again, it's unplug it before, rebuild your database in safe mode, and then unplug it again. Now that is something that you're gonna have to do a few times. So um, just remember that procedure. Uh, in any case, I've done that and I've cleared it out. So the next thing you can do, I'm gonna show you in Creation Club, I'm gonna go through all the steps here. So I have some Creation Club items, so I'm going to go ahead and log into Creation Club. And once again, I've installed my game fresh, I've downloaded all of the um, add-ons for the game, and then I turned off my system, and then I rebuilt my, unplugged it, rebuilt my database, turned it off, unplugged it again, and got back in, started the game, um, picked the settings that I wanted, and then now we've gone fresh into the Creation Club here. And then this is just my purchased items. So I'm only going to download the ones that I want to play with or that I've been playing with on the playthrough on my channel. So one of them is this, I have this anti-material rifle. So you just click on it and then when it loads, you can say download. It goes real quick. Same with the Arcade Workshop, you click it. Once the stuff loads, you can click download goes real quick. So anyway, so those are installed. Okay, so then it says you need to rebuild your, your game files and you say yes. And then it goes through its stuff here and it rebuilds the game files. It's gonna do this a few times during the steps that we take. Okay, so for now, I'm gonna, there's gonna be a cut break in the video here, and that's gonna be me uh, doing that reset on my PlayStation system. That was pretty quick and painless for you guys. It was pretty easy for me too. It was exactly as I described. Just rebuilt my database and cleared the catch a couple times. Uh, so now we're ready to install mods. Um, so that's pretty easy too. You just click on the mod section there and it opens the Bethesda page. If you've never done it before, it'll ask you to like, if you want to create a quick Bethesda account and that's fine. I think it bases it on your uh, PlayStation login information. Um, and then what I would recommend that you do, you can, you can go to the mod section on their website and, and click to filter just PS4 mods. And then you can look through what you want, and I recommend you favorite stuff, which is that little heart. Just whatever you want, you favorite it. And then when you log back into your game here, all of those favorites are gonna be right here in one nice, convenient, easy to use list. And as you can see, there's a ton and a half of them here because I use a lot of mods. And I'm literally just gonna go through, and this is the process. So you open it up. I like to wait to see if it's gonna kind of load everything and get to that point. And then you say download, and it'll download real fast. They all do, even the big ones download real fast. And then you immediately disable it. And then you back out, go to your next one.
Okay, so everything's... All right, it's all downloaded. I'm going to try and make this as comprehensive as I can because, you know, I am always getting questions about this stuff. Always. Uh, and I had to, like, kind of educate myself about it. And um, I figured I'd just kind of show people step by step here what I learned. So then you press the on the PlayStation, like we we're on, press the triangle button and you get to your load order. So in any case, I have a pre-existing list, but I also have loaded my mod list framework. So I'm going to kind of, while I order these, I'm going to kind of talk about why I'm putting them where I'm putting them. So yes, Fallout 4 patch goes first. This one I actually put down a little further. Uh, I put it underneath. You, it has to go at the top, but you, I put it underneath armor, weapon, keyword, community. So this is all in order now. Um, this one's a tweak, so I'm going to take it down a ways. As a matter of fact, I'll just bring it down now. Um, but these are basically what are called master files. Your patch, uh, integrated Commonwealth. These automatically sort up here anyway. Um, well, okay. So really the list goes like this. Master files first, then fast starts or frameworks. Anything that says uh, framework uh, would go after your master files up here. Um, this one's actually a scrapping mod. I wonder if I can go lower with it. No, see, it snaps. That's the thing. So it needs, apparently it needs to be towards the top. So anything that'll, that snaps too, when you grab it, just leave it alone. The next one I have is, uh, immersive gameplay, which I also kind of see like a, like a sort of master file or a framework. So, and it's... It, Honestly, it's kind of, it's a little bit about interpretation. Where is immersive gameplay? This is, this is, there it is. This is what makes it a little tedious. And your pictures don't have to be loaded. It's fine. They'll, they'll come in and out anyway. And like, they'll change places like that. Um, but those are like, sort of like, um, Faction and AI overhauls, um, stuff of that nature. I have the companion combat overhaul. So that alters AI that affected the AI. So I put it up with that. There's not like another place for stuff that does AI or that affects AI. Uh, the next thing I have is junk is junk because it's kind of a framework thing. It changes uh, some like wh how things are identified in your menu. Okay, so all, now is all the interiors. Those don't technically qualify as, some of them don't technically qualify as land masses, but uh, Subway Runner's in there. Um, so I put them all together right here. So the, f the framework for the interiors starts with Lexington interiors. But it's, I mean, it works. So, geez, I got a lot of mods. So, Command and Combat Overhaul. Oh, junk is junk. Oh, that didn't go there. It was there. Okay. Then plenty of exploration should go next. This goes after Lexington Interiors. Plenty of exploration. Then is Subway Runner. And this one's pretty cool. It adds subway stations in some of the major areas. And then you can go down into them. It, it works especially well with this zombie playthrough. Um, because it's mostly like ghouls and bugs and stuff down there. And then if you replace the bugs with ghouls, then it does it down there too. Um, and that's really cool. So it's like you go down into the subways and you got zombies down in the subways too. Uh, and then Beantown Interiors... I wrote these down, my working load order, I wrote down, which I suggest you do, uh, so that I can refer back to it when I have to do something like this. 
Um, the other thing you can do is if you don't want to go through these like this and have to organize them yourself, then you can download them in the appropriate order and it'll just put them in that order. Uh, so that's, that's an option. Uh, and then stumble upon interiors and that should be the last interior mod. I'm not sure where that was. Snipers, scopes, da da da. Stumble upon interiors. And this is all since we downloaded the Creation Club content and then uh, reset our system. All, there hasn't been another reset yet. We've just downloaded everything and we're just putting it in order. Just to kind of recap there. So then, new factions. NPCs travel seems to work right here. Um, it basically adds new factions. Because it's all these, these traveling groups of people. But it works up here, so I'm going to leave it up here. Somebody might put it somewhere else and you know what maybe you'll have better results than I do <laughs> aliens of the commonwealth is next and that is a new faction definitely aliens um, but it doesn't add a new landmass it changes an old landmass um, and as you get closer to the bottom this is going to go quicker and quicker then snipers of the commonwealth which is also kind of a, a new faction or at least in my opinion. You got to kind of interpret it on your own terms. Aliens. Snipers. Okay. So that pretty much takes care of that. Uh, next thing on the list after new factions is bug fixes and unofficial patches. Now, un the unofficial patch automatically snaps to the top. There's nothing you can do about that. You can't reorder it. So just leave it alone. Leave it where it is. But... I have a patch for tr that transdogrify, which allows the dog armor to show up uh, on them, which I guess was a problem with the original transdogrifier, is that when you would change dog meat to a different type of dog and then put armor on him, you wouldn't be able, like the armor would clip or something like that. I don't know. I've always just used this patch. And it, and it works. Any, anything you change dog meat to, the dog armor works on him. Uh, then I got Ellie's Tweaks and Fixes. Now, Eleonora, I don't know if you're familiar with her. She's fairly famous in the mod community for building um, player homes. Uh, but she also put together this little tweak and fix thing, I, I guess. I don't know if it's just for the PS4 or what, because most of her mods you can't get on the PS4. She did do a lot, uh, she did do a group of player homes through the Creation Club on Skyrim. And I think she, m no, I don't, I don't think there's any player home. There might be player homes on Creation Club on here, but I like the Underground Railroad, so I don't ever use her stuff on here, but I use the Tundra Homestead all the time that she designed. Um, but yeah, Ellie's Tweaks and Fixes is her little own personal patch things. Uh, no. dun, 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 dun. Yeah, right there. Tweak, fix. Uh, what's next? Okay, then we got settlement building mods that add items to the menu, just the the, the vanilla way. So, like, they, um, they don't add, like, a whole new section to your um, settlement building. So, uh, I started with... Um, I put the Settlements Extended mod in here because it kind of affects all of your building stuff. So I thought it should probably go with all that stuff and probably even before all of that stuff. Now, I don't know. Maybe it's not working right for me. 
or maybe it's not working the way it's supposed to work for me. But there it is. Um, but it seems to work fine. They did extend the build area in my game. <laughs> um, Kellogg's cybernetic implants. That does add a bench, but it is in a vanilla area. And then workshop interactive objects is the same. It just injects some buildable things into one of the existing menus. Sometimes you just got to kind of mess around with it and decide if it's in the right place when you pick a, a mod. Dum, 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 dum. Yes. I'm just going to keep looking for that increased weapon and projectile range until I have to place that one. Military clutter is next. Um, now, military clutter does inject a holotape into the chem bench, but it's not that big a deal. Right there. Uh, and you see, I'm using the square button to reorder, like it says down at the bottom there. I didn't mention that, but hey, learn to read your menus if you don't know. Uh, next, dog rugs also just ex injects sort of usable dog rugs into the me build menu. There it is. So. Yeah, a lot of mods to order. Uh, grounded adds to the uh, concrete section of building. So that's vanilla. Uh, custom crafting stations adds vanilla. It adds to a vanilla part of the menu. And it works okay. It's a little... Um, it's not the easiest to use. Okay, and then I've got my OC Decorator. And the reason I've got OC Decorator here is because the next section of the load order is settlement building mods that inject menus um, in with advanced scripts. And that's what... OC Decorator has its own section in the building menu. So if you're going to get OC Decorator, first of all, make sure you order it right because the patch needs to go after it. And they both, yeah, OC Decorator DLC, see? So first you have to place OC Decorator, then you have to place the patch after it that, that patches in the DLC stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's got its own uh, menu that it adds at the very end of the build menu. Okay. Gameplay changes and tweaks. Now, I see this as just like little minor things that you want to adjust about your game. Like the first one I have is limited Minutemen quests. And that just keeps Preston, it knocks him down to one mission at a time instead of three, which is the default, which is annoying and stupid if you've ever had to deal with Preston before. He gives you three quests at a time, and it's you end up just completely overrun with Minutemen quests. Uh, so I like this one, because it gives him one at a time. So he just tells you one little story, and then you can go take care of it on your own time and figure it out. So that's just kind of a gameplay tweak. Uh, next is Sane Fusion Cores. Kind of the same thing. It slows down how quickly your Fusion Cores drain in your power armor, which is just a tweak. Uh, next one is Jetpack Longer Higher Flight Time, which is just a tweak. You see, like these just little things, like you. You can fly for longer in a jetpack. Okay. Just a little thing. It's not like a whole new game area. Uh, 
Dum 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 dum. Okay. Don't know where you ran. I went too high. Same fusion cores. Yes. Right here. Uh, then increased weapon and projectile range, which, okay, I can't use that for re reference anymore. It goes right there. Uh, basic companion's helper. Which, that one's... I don't have any new companion mods, which is what would go next. So what would go right after this? Increased weapon and projectile range. Would be if you add companions to the game. I don't use companions all that often, so I don't. But then after that is NPC and companion changes, which basic companion helper does. It, um, uh, right there, basic companions helper, and then also not OP dog meat, which changes one of your companions. So it buffs him up a little bit without. Um, making him overpowered is the the things of that, uh, and then I rename him Anubis. So dearest Anubis would go next because it makes changes to your companion. There it is. Next on my list is Dogs Not Brahmin, um, which is an NPC change. It changes all the pack Brahmin to dogs. Uh, the next one that I had was Ghouls of the Commonwealth. Now we're getting into our zombie mods. Now, <coughs> it's an NPC and companion change. Uh, it's adding ghouls it's the reason it's placed specifically where it's placed is because the mod author of the zombie walkers mod suggested that you place any mods that add ghouls or change npcs into ghouls just for his zombie walkers mod like it so it should go any of those mods and then his mod after it so uh ghouls of the commonwealth that's what i was looking for this adds 1,100 ghouls to the game, and I'm playing a zombie walker or a zombie playthrough, so I like that. Basic companion, not OP. There's some Nubis, dogs not Brahmin. Yeah, right here. Ghouls of the Commonwealth. Um, and then zombie walkers replace creatures, which is one of another. It's one of his mods. He replaces different creatures. Replace creatures. Yeah. So yeah, we just keep working our way down, working our way down. And then zombie walkers replace super mutants. These are all NPC changes. So they all kind of go together. Then we've got... The zombie walkers mod, the the actual one that makes it more like a zombie game. It's a really cool mod. Like if you haven't checked it out and you're you like zombie stuff, highly highly recommended by me. Um, there we go. Next on my list is realistic death physics. Now that goes under yeah NPC changes. Gorn Dismemberment, Bloody Mess. Oh, there it is. Apparently I'm just an idiot, so feel free to call me so. Realistic Death Physics, um, then Realistic Gorn Dismemberment is next. These are all NPC tweaks. And it, it'll apply to your zombies. That's why I put them afterwards. Um, then next on my list is Bloody Mess Gore Disable. 
and that just makes it so that even if you get the bloody mess perk you still get the critical bonus but nobody explodes because I don't find that very realistic when somebody explodes from a gunshot wound uh, headshots I find this one especially useful or especially immersive in the um, in this zombie apocalypse one because the guy that did zombie walkers did a really good job in general but this headshots one it made it much more interesting as far as I was concerned it um, in the original one, it still sometimes took a couple headshots to take down a zombie, and that's dumb. Um, so this makes, like, one and done, first of all. If you can get them in the head, even with just a baton, you can kill the damn thing. Uh, but also, it makes their limbs so much more easy to cripple and to, like, hack them off. So you can be running around with, like, a knife and, like, hacking off limbs. Or even you can knock them off with, like, a, like I was saying, like a baton. You can knock their limbs off. And they keep coming at you because of the realistic Gordon dismemberment allows things not to die if they get dismembered. So, I mean, it's it's a great combination. I love this combination of mods. Um, and then Corpse Collisions. I guess it's more of a tweak than anything else, but I've been putting it here. It seems to be working. Um, if you want to put it with tweaks, you totally can. I've been putting it after headshots. Uh, faster cell respawn is also an NPC change, I believe. Unless I've moved on without knowing it. No, because next is audio. Uh, so faster cell respawn. So that's also kind of a tweak. But we're still kind of in the same ballpark here. So, you know, maybe I'm not doing 100% perfect, but this has been working for me. Uh, now we get into audio mods. So that's the next thing. Radio and audio mods. Uh, all I have is reverb and ambience overhaul and mute those perks. So I'll just go ahead and put that up there real quick. And then reverb, reverb, reverb. Where are you? There it is. And that goes before. I put it. it those can. Those are interchangeable, those two. Um, but I just put them in that order, so I'm going to keep them in that order. <laughs> okay, so after radio and audio mods is visual, atmosphere, atmospheric, and textual improvements, um, which includes weather. So. Uh, that, which I guess is what atmospheric changes are. But so I've got a weather mod that I add after mute those perks. So where is it? It's called uh, PS4 Weather Redux, and it's really cool. Um, some of the storms are pretty amazingly made. Um, I would definitely recommend this one too. No matter what kind of playthrough you're doing, it makes it so much more fun. Perks. Yeah. I can reference this scrappable legendaries because scrap ones are towards the bottom. Uh, now is performance stuff. Well, kind of. Uh, these are visual performance uh, enhancers for me. So they are visual mods, and that's how I saw it. Um, visual, atmospheric, and textural improvement. So next thing I have is nitrous performance tweaks. And really, that just gets rid of God rays. It gets rid of visual stuff that's kind of unnecessary. Maybe it's immersive. Maybe you like it. If your system can handle it, then go for it. Um, I'm on a PS4, man. It's got performance issues no matter what. Um, but it's what I got, and it's what I like. So don't preach. Um, and then no more twigs. Is the next thing, which is also a visual thing. And then insignificant object remover.
And then we've got a now we get into lighting mods after your um, textural improvements and stuff like that. Uh, well, next would be textures, but we can't add textures on the PS4. So I've got enhanced lights and effects. Like, like you can see, it starts to go faster as you get closer to the bottom. And I've also got the Pip Boy light overhaul. No, that's the picture for it, but I just. Again, don't worry about the the pictures matching up on these. It's not that big a deal. Uh, maximum encounters. Now that goes to settlement changes and tweaks because what it actually does is it raises the spawn level at like settlements and um, and areas to the maximum. It makes it harder for me, and I like that because I start out with some pretty cool stuff and I don't like it to be too easy so I put that there uh, power conduit radius increase that is a that's a settlement tweak power conduit radius increase so that that triples the distance that uh, lights will light up away from a power source Um, toggleable targeting HUD is HUD related. Now the next thing would be sorting and menu changes. Now I probably should have done that junk is junk there. If you can, put, if you want to put it there, you can. Mine seems to be working fine where it is. Um, but the next section is HUD related. So toggleable targeting HUD is HUD related. And HUD stands for Heads Up Display, if you didn't know. Uh, next is... Let's see. HUD-related character model replacers or player character enhancements. Now... I have first person animation tweaks which now this this is stuff that affects your character and like your or your character model. So my first person animation is definitely a thing. Targeting HUD scrappable legendaries that's what we're looking for here. Um power armor quick enter and exit that's a tweak for your character. And your character animation. Let's put that there. Uh, next is Pip Boys and Map Mods. I don't have any of those. Now, next is Weapons, Armor, and Clothing that's non craftable. Now, I have one of those. I have the Bandolier. I think it's called, what's it called? Wasteland Bandolier Legendary. And you have to buy it from somebody, so it's not one to craft. So it goes here. Uh, next on my list is okay. Now we got our crafting. Um, I don't have. There's lots of different sections for crafting, um, but the first one that I use is the chemistry bench one. So I immediately go into chem bench mods right here, and those are. I have seven of them. Saving in survival mode, which adds craftable save things to the cam bench. Dang it. I keep going too far. Next is vertebrate taxi service, which adds craftable stuff at the cam bench um, in order to for the mod to function at all. So it's definitely a cam bench mod. Uh, simple camping is crafted at the cam bench. Okay, next one, Power Armor Carry Weight is crafted at the cam bench. Um, build your own scrap, which I found better than 
craftable components because it's they're it's a little more realistic what they cost to make in my opinion uh, make static make static is the next one we need um, so once again I'm looking for scrapable legendaries okay let's go above that okay what is next on my list zombie slayer is also a Ken bench mod it's the only way you can get this weapon is to craft it at the chem bench, which in my opinion makes it a chem bench mod. Um, detach weapon mods for free. Now that is not a chem bench mod, but that is crafting um, armor and weapons, stuff that affects armor and weapons. Um, and then there's the next one after that is workbench and new recipe mods. So th this one, detached weapon mods for free, just kind of affects crafting. So that's why I put it here. Um, the next one I have on the list is immersive looting. Um, because I don't have any more Kimbench mods, but... It's uh, settlement and other building changes and tweaks is the next section. Um, and immersive looting changes the containers at a lot of your settlements. So I put it here. Um, now you don't, I don't know if, I mean, I know I mentioned this in a previous video, but don't start, definitely do not enable immersive looting before you start the game and make your character because it will... Um, mess with the vault entrance during the opening sequence and you'll end up falling down the vault shaft and dying like every time so don't enable that until after you get your your pit boy and you're about to leave the vault um anyway next one is vault looter this one is fine to enable right at the beginning of the game and then you get some loot right there at the beginning in vault 111 uh, then we got the Better Sanctuary Bridge Fix, which alters something at a settlement. And then, um, then the next section is new settlements and other, or new player homes. Sorry. Uh, new player homes is that we just did new settlements and other building changes and tweaks. Next is new player homes. So Underground Railroad is a player home. I don't care what you say. Um... It's on its own plane of existence, but it's a player home. So that's where that goes. Uh, and then castle revamp. I guess that's a change to that. Maybe that's supposed to go above that. I didn't put it above that, but I also haven't enabled it yet. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to put it above Underground Railroad. Uh, because it's a, it's a change, not a new player home. Um, then we have... The next would be quests and collectibles, which I don't have any of. Uh, weapon and armor modifications. Now, that's like scopes and stuff like that. So, see-through scopes would, is my next thing. <coughs> and then after that, I got that CYSV... Which, I don't know what that stands for. Choose your scope vision. Oh, okay. Um, scrappable legendary. Now, these... That's scrap mods. So, after weapon and armor modifications would be landscape and grass, which I don't really have any landscape mods other than the stuff that's performance-based, uh, textural shit. Um, but next is scrapping mods. So, what I have next is scrappable legendaries. Ha ha. Which is already there. Then more scrap from junk. And then scrap that settlement all in one. Uh, and then I have... The extras living and dead. And then I did my time scale... And then is UCO base game, UCO season pass. Now, always build Nuka Raider resource. I think that's a tweak. 
So I just add, I'm just now adding this. So uh, let's put it up with our uh, those are performance tweaks. Your NPC tweaks. Same fusion. Here we go. Limited minimum quest. Same fusion course. Jetpack. Increased weapon and projectile range. Yeah, let's put it here. With the tweaks. Okay. So, that's our whole mods list. That's everything I'm going to install right now on this playthrough. And we got it all sort of put in there. And and ordered. So this is this is our load order with all of these mods. And I, I know that took a long time. I'm sorry, but uh, now really all you do, you get out of that. You're back at the mods page. Like I said, these pictures glitch out all the time. I don't know why. But just exit out, and it says, "Hey, your mod selection and load order has changed." game will now reload your data files just like it did with creation club content so you say okay and it does its thing and it reorders everything now that took a little while but we did just install and order over 80 mods so forgive me for the long video but I just walked you through an 80 mod install um, enabling is uh, coming up next and that's gonna take a while too because we got to do a little bit of gameplay in order to do it 